Hey everyone, I just recently 100%ed Dark Souls, and during that time, a question popped into my head. Can you beat Dark Souls with no armor and fist only? For this run, I will only use the knowledge that I had through my most recent playthroughs. I'm doing this to test myself to see if I could figure out this run on my own without any outside help. I'll also be explaining how I went through this run and the decisions I made along the way, so if you too get interested in doing this run, you can have that information on hand and not make the same mistakes as me. With that being said, let's get to the rules for this run. Number one, I'll only be using the Cestus and no other weapons. That includes not using Claws, Dark Hand, or Dragonbone Fist. I want to give the bosses a fighting chance, which I will regret. Number two, I cannot use any shields at all. That includes not being able to equip them for just stat bonuses. Looking at you, Grass Crest Shield. Number three, no armor. That includes Kirk Thorn Gauntlets, which would give a 10% damage boost to fist weapons. Number four, all rings are allowed. Number five, only buff items or spells can be used for combat. That means only using power within, blade miracles, magic weapons, or any of the pine resins. Number six, no glitches or mods, just to show you you could do this without them. Number seven, level caps. I do this to prevent myself from over leveling to make bosses easier. The max level for this run will be 90. I made this decision after looking at forums and websites of what the average level someone beats Dark Souls, which is around 80 to 85. I decided to be nice and give myself 5 more levels because I will be naked the entire time. Number 8. I can only get large ember after beating bell gargoyles and very large ember after beating ornstein and smo. Same as level caps, doing this to not have any overpowered weapons to make fights easier. Number 9. No summons. We already know that summons would make the fights too easy. Number 10. Beat the game. This strictly means just finishing the game, no need to kill all bosses within the game. Alrighty, with the rules out the way, let's get this run started. Starting off, give your character a name that they'll never be able to live up to. For the starting class, I went with the Deprive for the evenly distributed stats, plus he starts with no armor. For the gift, we go with the Master Key for quick access to Andre to be able to get the Cestus weapon right away. We wake up in our cell, drop our current weapon because we'll not be needing it anymore, grab the key and bust the hell out of there. Find our knight in shining armor who graciously gives us our first taste of crack, which we will definitely be addicted to using. Make our way to the fog door with our empty bottle of crack, run off the ledge like the mad lad that you are, punch the demon straight in the face, and oh dear god. This might take longer than I thought, and I'm dead. All right, round two. For this fight, you want to stay behind the boss the entire fight. He has an attack called hammer backswing that can hit you from the side or hit you from behind. When you see this attack coming, just roll towards his tail and you'll avoid the hit. The only other attack to be careful about is his butt slam attack. He will fly up into the air and slam back down. This attack has a bit of a range to it, so you want to make sure to run away when you see him in the air. Once he comes back down, rush behind him and continue chipping away at his health. This fight will take you a while to beat. It took me about 15 minutes, and unfortunately, this will not be the longest fight in the game. After what felt like an eternity, he finally goes down, scoring us our first Dark Souls badge. Make your way to Firelink Shrine, run around the area collecting some souls. There are four in total, but I managed to somehow miss one. Don't be stupid like me. With the souls collected, we can start heading our way to Andre. Stop by the local resin's house to jack some gold pine resin. We'll be needing it for later. After that, use the master key to get to Dark Root Basin. Oh, hi, Havel. Would you be so kind as to just let me- Ah, oh, oh, thank God for door animations. Run through Darkroot Basin to get to Darkroot Garden to get to Andre. Make sure to be careful about the Tynite Demon, he can be a bit of an ass. Buy the Cestus from Andre and we'll start grinding to upgrade the weapon to plus 5. For grinding, we'll just farm the Undead Soldiers and Boulder Knights at the Undead Church. The Undead Soldiers have a 1.6% chance to drop a Tynite Shard and the Boulder Knights have an 8% chance to drop one. We'll need 18 Tynite Shards to get both Cestus to plus 5. You can also buy Tynite Shards from Andre, but they cost 800 souls just for one. I personally waited to start buying some after I hit the first level cap at 15. While grinding, make sure to grab the Firekeeper Soul to upgrade our flask. Also, make sure to free Lotric. We will be needing an item from him. Head back to Firelink Shrine and upgrade our flask to plus one. While we are here, push Lotric off the cliff. It's okay. 
He deserves it. Reload into the game to get his ring. This will give us a 20% boost to HP, stamina, and equipment load. Make sure to not take it off because it will break. And we'll be wearing this the entire run. Head back to the undead church and make sure to pick up the basement key for later. Hit our first level cap of 15. For the stats, I put 3 points into endurance just to give me a bit more stamina to be able to dodge or run a bit more. 6 points into strength for some damage increase. After leveling, finish upgrading our Cestus to plus 5. With all that done, time to take on the Bell Gargoyles. Sorry, Solaire, I gotta do this one on my own. For this fight, we'll use the Gold Pine Resin that we picked up earlier to help make this fight easier. Starting off, we're going to try and get behind the boss to cut off his... We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Let's try this. Oh, fuck me. So I ended up running out of gold pine resin and ended up doing this fight with no buffs, which was a mistake. I was so frustrated at the time, I didn't think about getting magic weapon from Griggs or getting charcoal pine resin from the undead female merchant to increase my attack power. Magic Weapon would have taken my AR from 119 to 207, and Charcoal Pine Resin would have taken it to 199. Charcoal Pine Resin is probably your best option due to the Bell Gargoyles being weak to fire funny enough, but not by that much compared to Magic. Either way, any one of these options would have been a better solution than to me beating my head against the wall until I beat the boss. Main thing you want to do at the beginning of the fight is to cut off the first Gargoyle's tail. He has a nasty attack that he can use with it, so it's better that he doesn't have it. I found sticking close to his backside was the easiest way to deal with him, but that changes when the second gargoyle shows up. This fight gets very hard having to deal with both of them. Since not having armor, you get staggered very easily and can be two-shotted in most cases. I stayed focused on the first gargoyle due to the fact that he uses his halberd more frequently than the other, and if you get rid of him first, you are pretty much guaranteed to kill the other one. I tried to bait both of them into doing their fire breath attack at the same time because they stay still when doing it. I found this was the safest way to kill the first gargoyle. Majority of this fight was running around trying to get them to trigger this. But finally I was able to kill the first gargoyle. The second gargoyle doesn't put up too much of a fight and he goes down quickly, earning us our second Dark Souls badge. After this fight, I didn't want to make the same mistake again, so I started working on collecting some weapon buffs. So for some reason, I thought Dusk sold gold pine resins, which she doesn't, but to get to her, you have to deal with the Hydra. The Hydra fight wasn't anything crazy, just try and stand near the body with the item, and the majority of the time, they will not hit you. Start potching off some heads, and eventually you'll be left with one. This last head doesn't come anywhere near you, it will constantly stay near the edge of the water where you can fall off. So I found if you run to the right hand side, you can actually get the head close enough to occasionally hit it, and with enough patience, it goes down. That was a big waste of time. With that time sink done, I made my way to Greg's to get magic weapon. Use the basement key to get to the lower area of Undead Berg. Be careful of the dogs, the easiest way to deal with them is to let them get close to you and use your left fist, which is a jab, to stun the dogs and follow up with some right hooks to kill them. After that, rescue Griggs, unlock the shortcut to Firelink Shrine, and buy Magic Weapon. The way Magic Weapon works is it takes the magic adjustment stat from your catalyst, multiplies it by 0.8, and adds that value to your current weapon. A quick example using our level 15 stats, we have our magic adjustment stat of 110 times 0.8 plus our total AR of 119, which gives us our new total of 207. An easier way of checking this instead of doing the math is to apply the buff and just check your stats menu, and it will show you your total AR. This formula applies to the Blade Miracles as well. I originally had no clue how it worked, so after learning it, I just wanted to share that with you all. We will also be needing to buy the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring. This will extend our buffs for 50% of their duration time. Grind out 20k souls and buy the ring. After that, immediately kill Griggs. He deserves it. He will drop the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, which allows the wearer to produce no sound. This will help with assassinating enemies and getting around areas without them noticing us. After that, we take on the Capra Demon. I decided to take him on at level 20, nothing fancy here. Cast Magic Weapon before the fight and just do the usual tactic of killing the dogs first and Cheese Plunge attack on Capra Demon. With that, we earn us the Depths Key. Before going to the Depths, make a quick stop at the Undead Merchant and grab some Charcoal Pine Resin, which will add 80 fire damage to our AR. Also make sure to grab some purple moss for Blighttown. 
Make your way down the depths and get the large ember. While we're here, save Laurentius, and the next time you're at Firelink Shrine, talk to him to get the Pyromancy Flame. We'll be needing it for later. Go back to Andre and upgrade your Cestus as high as you can. While we're here, buy the Weaponsmith box and the Repair box. We do this so we don't have to come back here to finish upgrading our weapons. With that done, we'll head to Blight Town. Take the back entrance using the master key to get there. Once you make it down, start farming giant leeches. Giant leeches have a 5% chance of dropping large Titanite shards, which we will need a total of 18 to get our weapons to plus 10. Just make sure to have your humanity above 10 to help with the increased drop rates. After upgrading our weapons to plus 10, we can take on Quelag. I ended up taking her on at level 32 because I was too lazy to keep grinding at the time, which I would end up regretting. For my stats, I started putting some points into Vitality to help with some survivability. Started hitting a bit of a decline in attack boost from strength, so I started putting some points into Dex to give me a higher attacking power. Before entering, make sure to have the Lingering Dragon Crest ring on and apply Magic Weapon to your right hand. This fight started off pretty easy for me, and then Murphy's Law had to be a bitch. Well, I did get close on my first try, so I should definitely beat her next try. Oh, thank fucking god. So it took me 9 deaths to figure out what I was doing wrong. I made the mistake of staying too close to the inside of her legs. This is bad because she has an AoE attack that comes close to one-shotting you, and majority of my deaths came from that. When you are near her legs, you can get stuck between them. Doesn't matter how hard you spam the roll button, you get fucked every time. For some reason, I thought I needed to hit her torso to do damage, when you can actually hit her legs to do damage. Once I figured this out on my 10th try, I had no issues. The easiest way to deal with her is to stay close, but not to the point of being stuck in her legs. Being right up on her, you can dodge all of her sword attacks and get some hits in while doing it. Only time you won't be up close to her is when she's doing the AoE attack, which the tell sign is her lowering down to hug the spider. When the spider starts shooting lava, this is your best time to get some damage in. After going through that hell, we finally earn our third Dark Souls badge. On our way out, make sure to grab the Firekeeper Soul in the area. Back at Firelink Shrine, upgrade our flask to plus two. Stop by Damal to buy the three Gold Pine Resin he has. Gold Pine Resin gives 160 lightning damage added to our weapon. We'll be needing this for a later boss fight. At this point, I had forgotten about grabbing Power Within at Blight Town, so I made my way back down there to grab it. Power Within gives the user 40% more damage at the cost of losing 1% of your health per second. The duration of this buff is 100 seconds. If you're wondering why I didn't use this for Quelag, I do not know. It's one of the many mistakes I made while doing this run. Being a bit under level, I head to Darkroot Garden to grind to our next level cap of 45. The enemies you want to kill are the Stone Knights. They give 600 souls per kill. They are very weak to magic and should die within 2-3 to three hits. While grinding in this area, make sure to kill some frog rays. They have a 25% drop rate on green blossoms, which gives the consumer 40 stamina points per second for 60 seconds which would be useful for traversing around the world faster. Finish up grinding and hit level 45. I dumped some more points into decks for some more power, 1 point to endurance for a smidge of stamina, and lastly 4 points into vitality for some more health. With the level cap reached, work your way through Sin's Fortress. Along the way, grab the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. It will help with grinding for items. Once at the top of the fortress, take out the giant that throws firebombs. The easiest way to deal with him is to bait him to throwing a tantrum, and after he's tired from throwing his fit, you can permanently put him in timeout. Make sure before entering the iron golem fight to cast your weapon buffs. I messed up again here, I should have put a point into attunement to get a second spell slot for power within. Or at least change out magic weapon for power within. I for some reason thought he was super weak to fire when it's lightning that he's weak to. The ideal buffs for this fight would have been Power Within and Gold Pine Resin. But I just use Troll Call Pine Resin because I just like making life harder for some reason. Even with this mess up, I didn't have any issues with this fight. If you were to just weave in and out of his legs, you can dodge all of his attacks. I got unlucky and didn't get the cheese kill by making him fall off the bridge. But with just the weaving a tactic, he goes down quickly, giving us our fourth Dark Souls badge. Before going to Anor Londo, we have a few things we need to get done first. First, we need to head back to the Undead Asylum to get the Peculiar Doll to access the Painted World. Go back to Firelink Shrine and hit up the Giant Crow to bring you to the Asylum. 
Once there, get back to your cell and grab the doll. After getting the doll, we will head to the catacombs. Make your way down to the secret room, run past the skellies, and grab the dark moon Sinis ring? I have no clue how to pronounce that. So that we can talk to Gwendolyn later. With that done, head to Pinwheel to get the Rite of Kindling, which will let us have up to 20 flasks. Pinwheel, as usual, goes down in a couple of hits. I still have trouble seeing him as a boss. With those tasks done, head back to Sin's Fortress to get to An Orlando. While making your way to the castle on top of the rafters, cut the chandelier down. It has greater magic weapon on it. Make your way to Gwendolyn by pushing the lever clockwise twice. You should also go grab the greater magic weapon spell, but I wasn't being smart at the time and left it for later. Put on the dark moon ring and walk towards the boss door. Stop at the carpet and Gwendolyn will ask you to join his covenant. Be careful to not say no because he will not give you a second chance to join. We are doing this to just set us up for later to get the dark moon blade. With that done, sprint past all the enemies to get into the castle. Make sure to spin to win past the- Let's try that again. Make sure to spin to win past the black knights to get into the castle. This area we will use to grind out to our next level cap of 60. There are only silver knights here, which works in our favor because they are easy to parry. And before you know it, you'll be at level 60. For stats, I put the majority of my points into strength and dex, and one point finally into attunement for power within. Now comes for the hardest boss in this run, Ornstein and Smo. Let's just get my mistakes out of the way. I didn't use power within because I was scared of the decreasing health after the first try of using it. Not getting greater magic weapon and adjusting my stats to use it. Not being a bit more aggressive during this fight. If I wouldn't have done these things, this fight probably wouldn't have taken me as long as it did. In total, it took me an hour and 40 minutes to beat this boss, and the victory attempt took me 17 minutes and 8 seconds alone. Why did it take me this long? Well, I was so scared of Smo one-shotting me that I ended up just doing the turtle tactic where you just poke and run until the boss dies. To be honest, I was not happy with using this strategy, but I was never able to overcome the fear of Smo popping out of nowhere and just killing me. I decided to focus on Ornstein first, just because it's easier to cheese Smo in the second phase. Ornstein attacks are not that bad to dodge and get hits in. The only attack he has that can be a nuisance is his room reaching lunge attack. In truth, this is not too hard of an attack to dodge. What makes it annoying is the boss's AI. If Ornstein gets stuck behind a column or Smo when he does this attack, he spams the fuck out and when he spazzes out, he will not fly straight at you. Instead, he will zigzag very close to you, which you will think that he's going to hit you, so you roll, but he instead zigs again and then he hits you after the roll. It's extremely frustrating because when he spazzes, attack no longer becomes predictable to dodge. You just have to get lucky and dodge at the right point because the AI fucked up. The way I went about this first part was very slow and tedious, but I do think if I actually knew the fight better and wasn't afraid of Smo, it could have been done faster. I really wish I could give better advice for this fight, but even now looking back at the footage, I'm still not sure what I would have done differently besides using better buffs for more damage. As you can tell by now, first phase is by far the hardest part of this fight. Once you make it to the second phase, it's all about taking your time and not being greedy. Smo will have Ornstein's lightning powers and really likes to do this butt slam attack which becomes an AoE attack. To deal with him, you just put a broken pillar in between the both of you and the attack will not hit you. After he finishes slamming down, just rush in, get a few attacks in, and rinse and repeat. You want to be very careful because you can still get one-shotted by him. This could be due to his butt slam attack or his jumping hammer attack. Just play it safe and you will earn your fifth Dark Souls badge. With that heinous fight out of the way, we are rewarded with the best view in the castle. Even though they are fake, we can still appreciate. After you are satisfied with your view, talk to Guinevere and receive the Lord Vessel. We will not be killing her this run because we don't want to lose the use of the Dark Moon Blade. So if you haven't yet made your way to Gwendolyn and join his covenant, you can go do this now. Now, we are doing this to get the Dark Moon Blade. The Dark Moon Blade is a miracle weapon buff that gives 1.8 times magic adjustment damage. You might be saying at this point, why not Sunlight Blade for the 1.8 lightning damage? There are two reasons. First is we can actually get Dark Moon Blade to a multiplier of times 2 if we reach covenant rank 2. Second is Gwyn, the final boss, is basically immune to lightning damage, so we are getting this buff to make his fight a lot easier. We won't be able to use this buff until the fight with Gwyn because we'll need 30 faith to use it, which will be around level 90. Gwendolyn won't give us Dark Moon Blade until rank 1. 
Normally, to level your rank in Covenants, you need to do PvP stuff to earn the items to increase your rank. But there is a PvE way to do this. The items we need is the Sovereign of Reprisal, and lucky for us, Crow Demons drop them. The Crow Demons are located in the Painted World, and because we got the Peculiar Doll earlier, we can go there straight away. With that being said, let's head to the Painted World of Ariamas. Oh, also make sure to pick up Greater Magic Weapon on the way if you made the same mistake as me, but you shouldn't because you watched this video. Once at the Painted World of Ariamas, make your way to the Colosseum Tower. I have no clue what the structure is actually called. Here you should be able to farm Crow Demons. They have an 8% drop rate for Sovereign or Paisal. Just make sure to have 10 Humanity in the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring to increase your drop chances. You will need a total of 30 Reprisals to reach rank 2. Now you could farm for 80 Reprisals for a multiplier of 2.1, but let's be honest, the 0.10% is probably not worth it. After collecting your Reprisals, punch a Poison Dragon to death, and then proceed to Karate Trap its lower half to access the exit. I will not harm Priscilla because I am not a heathen, you monsters. Make your way out and back to Gwendolyn. Increase your rank to plus two and we can do our last bit of farming for weapon upgrades. First things first, get the very large amber from New Lando Ruins. After this, farm Royal Sentinels in an Orlando. They have an 8% chance to drop Titanite chunks. We will need 18 in total to get our weapons to plus 14. To get plus 15, we will need a Titanite slab. To do this, we will go kill the Asylum Demon again. This will only give us one, but to get any more than that, you have to go hunting Crystal Lizards in the Great Hollow, but I was too lazy to go do that. The Asylum Demon, or its new name, Stray Demon, even though it does the same attacks as before, but with the addition of an AoE attack this time. Really, you just have to be careful of the AoE attack. You do the same tactics as before of just attacking him from behind, but with the extra step of moving out the way when he starts making things explode. After a few punches in the back, we score us a Titanite Slab. With Slab in hand, upgrade your right hand Cestus to plus 15. Through this time, you should have collected enough souls to hit our next level cap of 70. I increased my intelligence to 15 to use Greater Magic Weapon, and dump the rest into Strength and Dex for more base damage. With that done, time to take on Sif and the Four Kings. By the Crest of Artorius and head to Sif. Before or after the fight with Sif, make sure to grab the Hornet Ring that is behind the Tombstone. The Hornet Ring boosts critical attacks by 30%. The Sif fight isn't bad due to the fact of being level 70. That's my bad, I forgot he was a mandatory fight to get to the Four Kings. I was trying to get this run done fast so he slipped my mind. Overall, if you just stay close to him, none of his attacks can really hit you. It still hurts every time getting him to low health and seeing him limp. I'm sorry Sif, you're a good boy. Atorius would have been proud. With Sif sadly defeated, we get the Covenant of Atorius. Time to make our way to the Four Kings. The Four Kings was surprisingly not that bad. I was expecting to have to fight them a few times, but I was able to beat them on my first try. Even with making a mistake that could have ruined that. I went into this fight with three gold pine resins that we got from Damal because the four kings are weak to lightning damage. What I should have done was go farm the mushroom people for at least one more because I ran out at the last king and it made things a bit more scary. This fight is really simple, you just need to stay right on top of him. All of his sword attacks do more damage the further you are away, which works in our favor since we need to be next to him the entire time. Thunder punch the kings in the balls a few times and they go down earning us our 6th Dark Souls badge. With the 4 kings down, time to take on Seath. Before that, let's farm some shrooms for Gold Pine Resin. You really want to farm Mushroom Parents and Dark Root Garden. They have an 80% drop rate of Gold Pine Resin and a 20% to drop 2 of them. Have your boxing match with the parents where at the end you make a lot of Mushroom Children orphans. On your way to Seath, make sure to take out the Dark Moon Nitus. Don't worry, this won't hurt your relationship with the Dark Moons. Gwendolyn doesn't care if she's dead or alive. Take the Firekeeper Soul that you get from her to get a plus 3 flask. Hit our level cap of 75, and at this point we'll be putting all of our points into faith. Make your way to Seath, let him kill you, bust out of jail, run across some invisible bridges, and finally get to take on Seath the Scaleless. Surprisingly, we go further through the final bosses, Power Within just keeps dishing out more damage, making these fights easily beatable on your first try. For this fight, you just want to get to the crystal and hang out for a second, and let Seath get close so once you break it, you can wail on him while he cries about his Horcrux being destroyed. Seath is weak against lightning, so we'll be using the Gold Pine Resin for this fight. 
The trick for this fight is to just bait out his breath attack, run behind his leg, which will cause him to turn to you, and you could just punch away at his stomach until he dies. Now be careful of being behind his legs because he can throw a fit and start slamming his legs around which could two-shot you. With that said, kill the Voldemort of this world, earning us our 7th Dark Souls tag. Next fight is Nito. For this I could have been level 80, but I got a bit of confidence after Seath and stayed at 75. Make your way through the BS of the Tomb of the Giants to take on Gravelord Nito. Due to my overconfidence, I thought he wouldn't be that hard of a fight, but with not having armor, his skeletons can easily stagger you, making this fight feel impossible. Plus the BS fall damage you have to take each time you fight him. After dying and running back a few times, I finally decided I needed a divine weapon to deal with the skeletons. So I make my way back to Darkroot Gardens to kill Moonlight Butterfly to get the Divine Ember. At this level, Moonlight Butterfly is a pushover and kill her in a few hits when she finally decides to land. Bringing the Divine Ember to Andre, I decided to downgrade my left hand to turn into a Divine Weapon, which I cried doing for all those hours down the drain. When I realized afterwards, I could have just bought another Cestus to make a Divine Weapon. God, I fuck up a lot. With our new Divine Fist, make our way back to Nito. What you want to do is make your right hand have the Divine Fist and your left just have the normal ones. After you finish off the Skeletons, find an opportunity to switch your right hand back to your plus 15. Use Torkoal Pine Resin for this fight due to Nito being weak to fire. The only attack to worry about is the AoE attack, which you can tell is coming because he hunches over like he has a stomach ache which leads to him letting out a big fart that can hurt you. Just run away to the right side due to the fact that the left has a giant skeleton that we don't want to deal with. Repeat this a few times and Nito will go down, earning us our 8th Dark Souls fight. With Nito dealt with, that only leaves us the bed of chaos. Oh joy. I am not looking forward to this fight. Hit level 80 and put all your points into faith. Once again, I didn't feel like grinding at this time to hit 85. Make your way to the Demon Ruins, just run to your right here and we can take on Ceaseless Discharge. Grab the robes to start the fight and head back to the entrance. Well I see now how you got your name. After taking that quickie to the face and somehow surviving, head to the entrance to the fight to do the cheese method of making him fall to his death. That's what you get for not warning me it was coming. Run past all the enemies to fight the third Asylum Demon, but he's on fire this time. Nothing to say here, just do as the last Asylum fight since they do the exact same thing. After this fight, you will take on the Centipede Demon. Um, he's pretty annoying since you have to wait for him to come to you, but once he's there, just hang out between his legs and just watch out for his third leg, it's pretty dangerous. Really, he will just try to jump attack you, just roll away, and he goes down pretty quickly. Fun fact, both of these two bosses are actually optional. I didn't find out about this till after I did the run. A lovely waste of time. Run through the lava and make it to everyone's favorite fight in the game, the Bed of Chaos. I think everyone knows how this goes. Don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. One down, two to go. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Oh shit, I actually made it without dying. Damn, I'm feeling confident. I might actually be able to do this on my first... And there it is. Really, the trick to dealing with her is to stand back and wait for her to do her two arm swings. After that, just bum rush the section you need to get to. Also be careful even after landing on the root, if she does her arm swing attack as you're coming up, it can knock you off sadly. This fight is a good bit of RNG dependent on how good it will go. With that said, killing the little shit earns us our ninth Dark Souls fight. We finally made it. One more fight to go and we'll beat the game with fists only and no armor. Hit our last level cap of 90 and finally reach our level 30 faith to use Dark Moon Blade. The last point can go anywhere you like. It was a long journey to get here. A lot of fuck ups on my behalf, but we made it. For this final fight, make sure to have the Hornet Ring on because we'll be pairing for the win. Once you are ready, apply your buffs and walk in. Instead of talking this time, I'll let the fight play out first and then commentate on it afterwards.
First off, I have no clue why those two sword attacks did not hit me. But I will not complain. I was pretty lucky to beat him on my first try. He could have easily killed me in a few hits. As shown, you just want to parry his basic swing attacks. Just be mindful that being close to him, he will try and grab you, and you do not want that to happen. After three successful parries, we earn our final Dark Souls battle. Well, we did it, everyone. We beat the game with no armor and fist only. As much as I fucked up during this run, I really enjoyed it. This was my first time trying a challenge run, and it was super fun to have to figure out what I was going to need to do to take on each boss fight. I highly recommend if you have ever been interested in doing a challenge run of Dark Souls to do it. You won't regret it. The satisfaction of completing it afterwards, it's much more rewarding than the first time you beat it. With that all being said, I just want to thank y'all for your time. Whether or not you made it to the end or only watched pieces of it, I truly appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Until next time. Let the true God be cast upon the world. Our Lord hath returned. God damn it. My guy's name is Saitama. I can't end this video without one-shotting a boss. Oh. <laughs>